Library Connections number 107. This is the Friday, July 22nd, 2022 edition of Library Connections. Welcome to the second part of our summer reading recommendations. In this video, I'm going to recommend 10 titles, and then next week I will recommend another 10 titles, all perfect for summer reading. These two videos will complement the one I did in mid-June, which was a 20-video list of summer reading recommendations. And I thought that was a little too long in retrospect, so we're going to just focus on 10 this week and next week, as that won't take as much of anyone's time. So, having said that, let's jump right in. Our first recommended read is Dirtbag, Massachusetts, A Confessional, by Isaac Fitzgerald. Founding editor of BuzzFeed Books, Fitzgerald grew up in a homeless shelter, once helped smuggle medical supplies into Burma, now known as Myanmar, and worked as a fireman and on a boat before leaping into New York's literary world. He's also written the best-selling children's book, How to Be a Pirate. He proclaims that life mistakes are my co-pilot, and here puts his co-piloting on display while also recommending a larger view of masculinity than the anger, isolation, and entitlement he's seen defining his gender. And that's the brief library journal review. Our second recommended read is the new novel Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. Vera's mother disowned her long ago, but she's headed home anyway to take care of the place before her mother dies. Home to the old house that her father built with his own hands. Her notorious, hated, much written about serial killer father whom Vera loved dearly, whose approval she longed for, and who she ultimately betrayed. As Vera cleans out closets and cabinets, she deals with her cruel, sharp-tongued mother, as well as one of a long line of parasitic artists taking up residence in the guest house in order to get inspired by her father's legacy. Vera begins to wake up with grease in her throat and something lurking under her rickety childhood bed. Someone is messing with her, but who? Vera's childhood splinters in her hands as she pries back the floorboards to uncover the mysteries still lurking in the house's woodwork. Gilly's newest gothic novel is painfully suspenseful and richly dark, their rushing, intoxicating writing in peak form. Delightfully creepy and heartbreakingly tragic, just like home is equal parts raw terror of a dark childhood bedroom, creeping revelations of a true crime podcast, and the searing hurt of resentment within a family. It's a must-read for all gothic horror fans. Our third reading recommendation is The Lioness by Chris Bogillian. In 1964, top of the heap white actress Katie Barstow honeymoons in the Serengeti with new husband David Hill and a bunch of their glittery Hollywood friends, including distinguished black actor Terrence Dutton, with whom Katie starred in a controversy-sparking film. They're looking forward to a luxurious safari, watching the giraffes and the wildebeest play, and guzzling gin, with ice, of course, from kerosene-powered ice makers. Instead, they get kidnapped, with Soviet mercenaries shuffling them into Land Rovers, leveling guns at their heads, 
as their Tanzanian guides lie bleeding in the dirt. Will they all survive? Different from the 1660s Boston set Hour of the Witch, the HBO Blessed the Flight Attendant, and the topical Close Your Eyes Hold Hands, with Bojillian doing what he does best, surprising us. For suspense readers, as well as those who love historical fiction and women's stories, plus literary readers with a desire for adventure and great language. And I think that sums it up. If you're looking for an adventure story, check out The Lioness. Moving on to our fourth reading recommendation, it's the new novel, Nuclear Family, by Joseph Hahn. Things are looking up for Mr. and Mrs. Cho. Their dream of franchising their Korean plate lunch restaurants across Hawaii seems within reach after a visit from Guy Ferrari boosts the profile of Cho's delicatessen. Their daughter Grace is busy finishing her senior year of college and working for her parents, while her older brother Jacob just moved to Seoul to teach English. But when a viral video shows Jacob trying and failing to cross the Korean demilitarized zone, nothing can protect the family from suspicion and the restaurant from waning sales. No one knows that Jacob has been possessed by the ghost of his lost grandfather, who feverishly wishes to cross the divide and find the family he left behind in the north. As Jacob is detained by the South Korean government, Mr. and Mrs. Cho fear their son won't ever be able to return home, and Grace gets more and more stoned as she negotiates her family's undoing. Struggling with what they don't know about themselves and one another, the Cho's must confront the separations that have endured in their family for decades. That one's definitely on my reading list. Moving on to our fifth recommended read, it's the new novel Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. This chunky fantasy tome marks the beginning of a trilogy that continues the tradition of magical, Victorian-inspired worlds. Mr. Colton and Alice Quick are detectives, tasked with finding children with magical talents and bringing them back to learn and find shelter at the Carndale Institute. These include Charles Ovid, a black teen of the American South, whose body can heal any wound, and Marlow, a boy with mysterious origins who shines with a bright blue light. But a murderous figure made of dark smoke is chasing them, and powered by a terrifying underworld creature determined to set the dead loose on the world by murdering children with talents. Myro's debut has a fascinating magical system. It's rooted in the ability to manipulate dead cells in the human body or in the air, and satisfying moments of tense suspense and frightening monsters. The characters are convincing, and readers will be quickly drawn into the narrative. While the book is long for the first in a trilogy, the unfurling of the story and the vivid cinematic quality of the world and its magic will appeal to classic fantasy lovers. High demand backstory with a 500,000 print run expect lots of publicity for this fantasy debut. Moving along to our sixth recommended read. It's called This Time Tomorrow, a new novel by Emma Straub. On her 40th birthday, 
Alice overdoes it with her best friend and wakes up in her teenage bedroom on her 16th birthday in the mid-90s. At first, this is unsettling, but then it's pretty cool. There's her author father, Leonard, dying in the present, and the cute guy she let get away then. The stalled-out career now, and the unbelievable youth, her father's especially, that she took for granted back then. And while it costs her a day each time, she can go back over and over, making decisions in the past that alter her present, both subtly and significantly. Her main focus? Setting Leonard on a path that doesn't end in the hospital in the today she started out with. Despite its sparkly time travel concept, this addictive and lovely novel is Straub's smallest so far, focusing ultimately on a single character and her most treasured relationship. Yet it contains no less of Straub's signature warmth and authenticity. Alice asks herself questions we all might, given the opportunity to enter a broom closet and exit as our former selves. And she has trouble letting go of her newfound ability or knowing when she should. And that's the Bookless Review. Our seventh recommended read is the new novel Thrust by Lydia Yuknovich. Lydia Yuknovich has an unmatched gift for capturing stories of people on the margins. Vulnerable humans leading lives of challenge and transcendence. Now Yuknovich offers an imaginative masterpiece, the story of Las Vives, a motherless girl from the late 21st century who is learning her power as a carrier, a person who can harness the power of meaningful objects to carry her through time. Sifting through the detritus of a fallen city known as the Brook, she discovers a talisman that will mysteriously connect her with a series of characters from the past two centuries. A French sculptor, a woman of the American underworld, a dictator's daughter, an accused murderer, and a squad of laborers at work on a national monument. Through intricately braided storylines, Las Vives must dodge enforcement raids and find her way to the present day, and then, finally, to the early days of her imperfect country, to forge a connection that might save their lives and their shared dream of freedom. A dazzling novel of body, spirit, and survival, Thrust will leave no reader unchanged. Another great adventure tale. And our eighth recommended read is completely different again. It's called Twice at Caseyera by Yamil Menendez. Why a author Menendez makes her adult debut with this heartwarming romance centered on personal growth. Lawyer Nadia Palencio finally grows the spine to break up with her cheating fiancé a month before what would have been their wedding day. Though she's anxious about breaking the news to her family and losing all her deposits, Nadia is inspired by an article about a Latina woman who never had a quesaria, but decided that it wasn't too late to celebrate herself with a party later in life. So Nadia decides to repurpose her wedding resources and throw herself her own traceria, or something close to that pronunciation, Spanish is not my uh, forte. Anyway, Nadia is decided to throw herself a party to celebrate herself 
and her accomplishments as a single 30-year-old woman. But Nadia is thrown for a loop when she discovers that the venue's owner is the handsome Marcos Hawkins, her one-time college fling. The pair immediately lusts for each other once more, but their relationship is put on the back burner as they separately work through issues from the past. Luckily, Menendez offsets the lack of heat between the couple with warm-hearted support from a colorful supporting cast of family and friends as Nadia moves towards self-acceptance. It's a fun, empowering romp. Another one for my reading list. Our ninth recommended summer read for this part two of our three-part video series is a sci-fi thriller, Upgrade, by Blake Crouch. It's his new novel. And it focuses on Logan Ramsey, whose mother Miriam was a brilliant scientist who changed the world. Fortunately, though, not for the better. Her DNA research a rogue attempt to modify crops via virus mutations led to an event known as the Great Starvation and the death of millions. It also led to the creation of the Gene Protection Agency, where Logan now works as a special agent. When a raid on an illegal gene lab goes wrong, Logan finds himself intentionally modified exposed to a virus that enhances his mental and physical capabilities, turning him into a superhuman. Was this his mother's plan all along? To create a new species of humans? Crouch's latest mind-bending thriller is well-paced, and his characters are realistic and interesting. While there is a bit of science jargon, it fits in perfectly with the action and won't bog down readers unfamiliar with DNA technology. This is an excellent follow-up to Crouch's other dark science novels, Dark Matter and Recursion. It will appeal to readers interested in climate fiction or superhero origin stories, as well as those who enjoy smart thrillers. And that's the book list review. And our 10th recommended summer read is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. Hugo and Nebula Award winner Kingfisher returns to the horror genre with this powerful, fast-paced retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. As a child, Alex Easton who uses the pronouns Ka and Khan, befriended twins Roderick and Madeline Usher, and went on to serve with Roderick in the recent war. Now, Madeline writes to tell Alex that she's ill, and Roderick believes she is dying, and Alex must come at once to their family home in remote Ruravia. There, Alex finds a moldering mansion full of fungal rot and strangeness, and two ushers who are terribly, irreversibly changed. Alex must unravel the dark secret that is consuming the house of Usher before it consumes Alex as well. Kingfisher adds wonderful dimension and tangibility to the classic Poe story, filling it with standout characters and scenic descriptions that linger on the palette, while fleshing out the original plot with elements as plausible as they are chilling. It's thoroughly creepy and utterly enjoyable. And that's the publisher's weekly review. And briefly, here are the references for this week's Summer Reading Part 2 video cast. 
Moving on to our next section, next week at the library, offering a brief look at the programs and events hosted by the library and at the library, by the library, for the week ahead of us. That's the week of July 25th through the 29th. This information can also be found online. Simply visit the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. And when you go to our homepage, you will see a big bold calendar link located near the top of the page. Click or tap that and you can access all the events that we currently have on our schedule. And I should say just a beginning note, and that is that registration is required for programs unless otherwise specified or unless the program is of the online on demand variety as programs that you would access through YouTube, through library blogs, or through our Facebook page. On Monday, July 25th, we have two programs at the library. The first is the Endless Mountain Music Festival with Baby Shark and his friends. That runs from 10 to 11 a.m. and is being held at the library. And then from 6 to 8 p.m., we have Crafting with Kimberly. This month, the project is Starfish Wreath. That program, too, is being held at the library. On Tuesday, July 26, we have four programs to bring to your attention. The first is Adult Scrabble, which is held in the library's reading room and runs from 9 to 11 a.m. Then from 10 to 11 a.m., we have Miss Sue's Tuesday Storytime, which is a hybrid program. You can attend in person in Fallbrook Park. That's the park across the street from the library. And you can attend from home or anywhere else by visiting the library's Facebook page. Then from 10.30 to 11 a.m., there's Coffee, Tea, and English Online Conversation. That's a Zoom program, so you have to register to get the Zoom link. And finally, the Junior Chef program for July, which, by the way, is full. So if you've already signed up for this program, know that you could come and drive by the library's Tioga Avenue entrance between 6 and 7 on Tuesday, July 26, and pick up your oyster cookies packet of ingredients. If you haven't already registered, you can check our calendar online and register for the next program, which will be in August. On Wednesday, July 27th, we have a whole host of programs that the library is doing. No kidding, summers are busy, busy, busy. We have nine programs to bring to your attention. The first, from 10 to 10.30 a.m., is Dive into Kindergarten Storytime. This program is being held in Fallbrook Park and it's intended for little ones that are getting ready to go to kindergarten. Then from 11 a.m. to 12 noon, there's Little Gather at the Corning Museum of Glass. The location of that program is the Corning Museum of Glass. And basically what's happening is that on Wednesdays during the summer, the library will be at CMOG for each Little Gather family session at 11 a.m. They'll be offering a make-it-yourself project to do at home with instructions and a supply list. Admission to the museum is free for kids and museum members. There is an additional charge for non-member adults. And if you have questions about that, you can call the museum at 607-438-5429 or you could send them an email at littlegather at cmog.org. Then from 12 noon to 1 p.m., there's the free grilled lunch for kids 18 and under. This program is held in Civic Center Plaza between the library and City Hall and offers what it sounds like. It offers a free lunch for kids under 18 provided by the Corning Painted Post School District. If you're over 18, you can buy your lunch for $5. And that dot always gets me, but there it is. <laughs> Okay, so this time let's get the dot first so we know we're on Wednesday, July 27th. There we go. So mid to late afternoon programs include Sticky Notes Thematic Book Club from noon to 1 p.m. This is an online program, so you have to register to get the online link. Then from 1 to 2 p.m., it's the always popular Kids Farmers Market, which is held in the library's community room. 
And this program allows kids to come to the farmer's market at the library and pick from a free selection of delicious and healthy fruits and vegetables. You enter through the Shemung Street door and exit through the lobby. You must bring your own bag. Then from 1 to 3 p.m. we have Meijong, which is being held in the library's reading room. And moving on to our evening programs on Wednesday, July 27th, first up is Happy Tales Therapy Dog Story Time for Kids from 5.30 to 6.30. This program is held in the children's department. And then from 6 to 8 p.m., we have the Corning Adult Writers Group, our weekly writers group, which is a hybrid program being held both at the library and via Zoom. You have to register for the program. On Thursday, July 28th, the library is hosting two programs. The first is STEM Storytime in Fallbrook Park from 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. The STEM Storytime will consist of a short story time followed by a STEM project, STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and math. In the event of rain, the program will be held in the library's community room and that program is made possible by a generous private donor. Then from 4.30 to 6 p.m., we have Teen Dungeons and Dragons, a program being held at the library. The program is led by professional dungeon master Tim Collins, and this gathering is suitable for those ages 13 through 17. All levels of experience will be welcomed in this safe space. Come to one or all gatherings. Registration is required. On Friday, July 29th, we've got three programs in library land. Kicking things off with Science Time with Miss Abby, which runs from 10 to 10.30 a.m. That's accessible through Facebook. Then from 1 to 1.30 p.m., we have the new edition of Library Connections, which you can access through the library's Facebook page and YouTube. And on the 29th, it will be part three of our summer reading recommendations series. Then from 8 to 10.30 p.m., there's drive-in movie night at Corning Credit Union. Gather the family and join us for our family favorite drive-in movie night in Corning's Gaffer District's north side. We will be showing Clifford the Big Red Dog. Tickets are $10 per car load and include four bottles of water, compliments of the library, and a bag of popcorn. Please enter through the Pulteney Street entrance. And briefly, here are our library program's contacts. Just in case you have any questions, you can give us a buzz or send us an email.